Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Pico, President of the Chamber, and I'm spending a few minutes with each of the nine candidates running for a seat on our Chamber Board of Directors this year so that you can all, as members, get a chance to know them a little better before you vote in our election. Annually, our members have the opportunity to elect three people to the Chamber's 18-person board, and then our existing board elects three more members from the remaining pool of candidates so that we have six new board members each year. The first phase of our election where members vote will run from October 2nd through the 16th. And remember that each business or nonprofit member gets just one vote. I'm pleased today to have Diane Lebson from Evergreen Philanthropic Solutions with me. So Diane, thank you for joining me and thank you for your willingness to serve the chamber in this way. Welcome. Thanks, Tom, I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. So tell us a little bit about, um, about you and your path to living in Camden, Maine. Where's home for you originally and uh, how did you end up here? So. Right, well, thanks for asking that question. So I grew up in Connecticut, just outside New York City on Long Island Sound. So another great community right on the water. So living in Camden feels like home. Eric, my husband and I moved to Camden full time in 2018 after spending 30 years in Washington, DC. And believe me, especially during this time of the pandemic, there's no place I'd rather pandemic than right here on the mid coast of Maine. We have some great social distancing opportunities here, don't we? It's uh, really, uh, we're very fortunate to be here always, but especially in this time, so. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so tell us about um, Evergreen Philanthropic Solutions. Sure. So I am the CEO and co-founder of Evergreen, and we are a national consultancy that serves nonprofits, individuals, corporations, both here on the mid coast and all across the country on their philanthropic goals. So whether it's running a fundraising campaign, a capital campaign, helping somebody figure out where they want to make a nice large charitable donation or helping corporations determine how they want to invest their charitable dollars, we are here to help them. So um, prior to Evergreen, you have a pretty impressive resume as well. So tell us a little bit about your career before starting Evergreen. Absolutely, so I am a nonprofit executive with 30 years of experience in this space. For most of that time, I worked for both the American Red Cross and United Way, where I led their women's giving programs. So we mobilized movements that uh, engaged over 70,000 women, and both of the programs that I oversaw raised over $1.5 billion under my leadership. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. Two terrific organizations, so that's wonderful. Um, you. So you've become pretty involved in the community since moving here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're engaged? I know you're a Rotarian, and I'm sure there are many other ways that you are engaged in our community as well. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, I'm very proud of being a Camden Rotarian. I first joined uh, Rotary when I was stationed overseas in Canberra, Australia, where I was in encouraged to join the Rotary Club down there. So moving up here to me and being a Rotarian has been part of a decade-long decade commitment to that movement. I recently stepped off the board after serving two years as the Camden Rotary's Chair of Communications. And I had the honor of being named a Paul Harris Fellow for my service. Hmm. Now, in addition to Rotary um, and prior to the pandemic, a colleague and I started an initiative called the Mid Coast Nonprofit Networking Initiative, which is a forum for nonprofit executives in the region to exchange ideas. Well, since the pandemic um, really put a little Smart in our plans. We originally wanted this to be a dinner series where people can network and build relationships in person. We moved it online. So right now we are a Facebook group where people exchange ideas and look for advice. So in addition to that, I'm also a member of the current class of the Midcoast Leadership Academy, which is a great opportunity for people to learn about the great assets that our region really offers neighbors. That's great. Well, I'm an alumnus of that program myself, so I, I can speak to uh, the great work of Mid Coast Leadership Academy too. So, so talk a little bit about the chamber, and uh, you um, have been a member since um, moving to the area, which is great. And um, what are some things that you've seen that the uh, the chamber does, uh, events or programs or publications or whatever it is that um, stick out to you as things that are important to our area? 
Sure. So I had participated in a number of the chamber after hours before the pandemic struck, and I'm very grateful for the connections I made there and the business I was able to leverage as a result of those chamber after hours. But I really believe that the most powerful work that the chamber has done has been right now during the pandemic. Um, I really appreciated the advocacy efforts that the chamber has done on behalf of all of us members in Augusta. And especially as a nascent business here on the mid coast, I've really appreciated getting to know um, the programs that are available for the small businesses to leverage during the pandemic. And I'm also grateful for the work, Tom, that you have led to educate policy members in Augusta about the state of affairs here um, on the mid coast. So those are the things that stick in mind, really the chamber after hours and the networking and the advocacy, the fierce advocacy on behalf of the membership. That's great. That's great. Thanks. So as you think about potentially joining our board, what do you, what do you see as things that uh, maybe we're, we're always looking for new ideas and, and uh, welcome the, the and which is part of the reason that we um, have our board election set up the way we do, because mm -hmm. we want to have that turnover of new energy and new ideas every few years. So what do you th see as things in your mind that maybe are things that you might bring to the table or ideas you have that have the ways that the chamber could improve and add even more things to what we do for the communities and businesses. Absolutely. So in addition to my fundraising and strategic planning skills, I really want to offer my experience as an entrepreneur in building a national service-based industry on the mid-coast. As I'm looking around at the environment here, a lot of businesses are retail businesses, they are bed and breakfast service, you know, and not really in the services and consulting space like I am. But I really believe that the pandemic has taught a lot of us, like you mentioned before, that people can work from anywhere, provided that there are enough support for them, like access to broadband. So I really would like to see the chamber really pro proactively marketing to other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who want to start service, you know, consultancies like mine. And I really would love for the chamber to make the case for them to relocate here. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I think I think you'd find a lot of support in the, um, the existing leadership of the chamber for that too. And we would welcome your energy um, in that area for sure. So anything else mm -hmm. before we wrap up that you'd like to share with our members? Sure. So Tom, I want to thank you for this time to chat with you and to chat with members about, um, about myself, especially since I'm relatively new to the community. I'm really grateful to be considered for service. Um, service on the board would really be my way of paying rent for all the great things that Eric and I have experienced since moving here. So we've encountered a very welcoming community. We're grateful for all the clients that we have been able to engage as a result of our membership in the chamber. And we're grateful for our thriving business. So I'm really grateful and I thank you for considering me for this role. Thank you very much, Diane Lebson. We appreciate you spending a few minutes with us today and thank you for your willingness to serve and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you.